Hello, welcome to Talking Balls, your weekly roundup of the High Peaks football results. I'm Louise Bellicoso, and as you can see, there's no Jason this week, he's away on holiday, so we're going to do a very quick version of Talking Balls for you. We're just going to run through the results and then stay tuned because at the end we've got an interview with Buxton manager John Reid. Uh, right, so we'll start with the Bucks then. Been a busy few days for them. They've had two games in the last four days. On Saturday, they were at home at the Silverlands against Ashton, and they won 2 0. Um, did have some very good early chances. Lee Morris, Greg Anderson, Scott Maxfield all had chances in the opening period, uh, but they couldn't put them away. And it was just after the hour mark when Buckson actually took the lead, thanks to a superb bicycle kick <laughs> from Mark Reed. So uh, fantastic there. Now, Ashton did have a spell of late pressure, but thankfully Buxton managed to keep them out. And then the points were wrapped up deep into injury time by Lee Morris with another goal, so fantastic there. Then last night, the Bucks travelled up to title contenders Bradford Park Avenue, and that game ended goalless, uh, 0-0. So, quite a good result against them. Obviously, they're pushing to uh, try and win the league, and um, a brilliant result there. John Reid was absolutely delighted with the performance by his side. Not too disappointed about missing out on the extra two points, so um, good news there. On the bad side, Greg Anderson was ruled out before the game. He failed a pre-match fitness test, a problem with his hamstring. So that's a bit of a blow for Bucks, and it doesn't look as though he's going to be fit for Saturday, which will be a big loss to them. Although, with him being ruled out last night, Reid did go for Joe Wilcox at centre-half. He partnered Sam Liversidge and uh, apparently did an excellent job. So John Reid was delighted with that which is brilliant. Uh, this Saturday, obviously, we're down to the last three games now, and this Saturday, Buxton travelled to Whitby Town, um, so that's another tough game. That's the 3pm kick-off there. Right, OK, so we'll move on to the new, new Mills then. Bit of a mixed bag for them this week, really. Last Monday, they beat local rivals Gloss at North End uh, to maintain their 100% uh, unbeaten run under their new manager, Ali Pickering, but then things took a bit of a turn for the worse this week, and on Thursday, they drew 0-0 at home, and then on Saturday, they crashed to a 2-0 defeat against Main Road. So I think their slim hopes of um, winning the title have been crash crushed, really, after all that, which is uh, a shame. Obviously, Newcastle were, were quite far away, and then uh, they, won they lost a few games, so there was a bit of a, a gap there. But I think New Mills have um, missed out on that, unfortunately. Uh, they will be hoping to improve on their results, though, when they are next in action tonight. Uh, when they travel to Winsford United, and that game kicks off at 7.45. OK, Glossop then. They entertained Bake Up Borough last night in a game that finished nil-nil. On Saturday, the Hillman travelled to Blackpool, and they played Squires Gate, but they lost for the sixth successive season up there when uh, the game finished 2-1. So, um, not a good ground for them, unfortunately. Uh, but they'll be hoping to uh, improve to net tomorrow night when they are at home to Atherton LR, so good luck to them. Right, now we're going to give the Hope Valley results a miss this week, but you can see them in this week's paper if you want to um, check out what's been happening there. So we're just going to go straight to John Reed's comments now, and then we'll see you next week. Right, John, so um, if we could just start by um, just talking about Saturday's win against Ashton. Uh, uh, really, the points are fantastic. Yeah, the performance... I have to say, <laughs> don't want to be a party pooper, but the, the performance it didn't uh, come anywhere near to the, uh, the the getting of three points. I thought we were very, very poor in a lot of departments. We looked very leggy, and it just looked like all these games were catching up on us. But, you know, we just hung in there. Scott Hartley had an absolute blinder. He made three or four fantastic saves. I thought we defended quite well. Um, and then in the second half, you know, little bit of luck with the first goal, you know, Mark Reed shot, got a slight deflection, same keeper wrong way, um, but nevertheless, you know, we'll take that, and then obviously, Gavin Knight did uh, tremendous work uh, in injury time to set up Lee Morris to score his fifth goal in, what is it, eight, eight nine games, whatever it is, mm. so, you know, as I say, not one of our better performances, I thought they played some nice football with Ashton, um, and as I say, um, to say that uh, we've played a lot of games, it looked like we've played a lot of games to be honest, but we ground out, as I keep saying to you guys, uh, I think we're one of our ugly wins, but we'll take a few more of them if we can. If you're asking for marks out of 10 on the performance, I'd only say about 3 or 4, but as I say, uh, marks out of 10 for 3 points is 10 out of 10. So we, we know we're only hanging by a thread on the uh, playoff, but you know, me, you know, at the end of the day, if somebody had said to me, Louise, with five matches to go, you'd still have a part to play in the playoffs, I'd have been absolutely over the moon. Mm. You know, but uh, as I say, we have to be realistic, you know, it's all we've got, we're now, it, it's not in our hands, it's in other people.
people's hands, but, you know, if they suddenly let it slip through their hands, we're waiting for them. And then looking at last night, obviously, the big trip up to Bradford Park Avenue, obviously they're chasing for the title, and a nil-nil draw. Well, it was an absolutely fantastic game to watch, I have to say that to you. Uh, we had, a, obviously, a, a major blow just before the kick-off when Greg Anderson failed a fitness test. So, uh, Joe Wilcox came in to partner Sam Liversidge. What a, what a partnership there. The two lads are under 21. And uh, after a shaky 10, 15 minutes were to be fair to Bradford, they came out with a lot of purpose and a lot of tempo. And they really put us under the, under the sword. And, and as I say, after a dodgy 10 minute spell to start with, Joe Wilcox and Sam Liversidge were tremendous and Wilcox in particular he just won every header they look very strong and it's really you know it's really given me another uh, another option you're looking at Joe and thinking oh dear me yeah you know there's another option you know a permutation of Greg and, and Joe Greg and, and, and Sam or, or Sam and, and, uh, and Joe Wilcox mm. and like I say we weathered the first half it was terrific played at a great pace they were really, you could see they were so fired up. Uh, but we got to the break at nil-nil, thanks to Scott Hartley. He made two or three fabulous saves. Um, and then in the second half, I just said to him at half-time, you need to step your, your pace up, the tempo. They've got the, the tempo. And we did. We came to the, we came right up to the, 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 the mark in the second half. And to be honest with you, Kieran twice and Gary Knight, had chances to win as the match, you know, and, and second half they never really threatened as far as, you know, shots on targets, you know, he's only had to come and punch a couple of Scott and collect them, but, you know, we looked very, very strong, we were getting stronger in midfield, you know, and as I say, uh, Gavin looked quite lively when he came on as well for, for Lee, we freshened it up with 20 minutes to go, uh, and like I say, they, they, they were, you could see they were very nervous and the crowd were very nervous from being, you know, because there were nearly 550, I think the crowd was, mm. 535, something like that. And from being very noisy, you know, the only people they could hear in the second half were a very, very good following from Buxton. And I, I would like to say uh, to, to them all, thank you very much for standing uh, when the lads came off and, and clapped them and, and cheered them like they did for a nil nil, you know, people could have gone, gone, gone away and gone, blew up, bloody boring, nil nil, but it, I can tell you now, it, it, it was one of the best nil nils I've ever seen, it was great advert for football, played at a great pace, everybody committed everything to the cause, and like I say, and when they came off, they, they really give them a, a, you know, a good applause, and uh, I want to thank them all for that. Mm, definitely. And perhaps earlier on in the season, a nil-nil draw there would have been a good result. I mean, it's still a good result, but were you a bit frustrated not to have got an extra two points with the win? No, not really. So I'm being very honest. You know, as I say, you know, we had to really dig deep to just keep them out in that first half. We had to, they, they put us in overdrive, to be honest. You know, and my lads had to work so, so hard to get to the break. And like I say, fortunately, we got to the break thanks to great goalkeeping and great defending. Just looking ahead to it, be obviously uh, another tough game. Yeah, tough game. We saw it at our place, but one of the very few games where we didn't turn up at home, we didn't play well against Whitby, even though we, we, we gifted them both goals at home. So, you know, we've got a score to settle there. So, uh, you know, I'm going there with a, with a good, with, with obviously uh, the last two performances behind us, and uh, we're going for three points. Mm. We're, we're going to go and enjoy ourselves, knock the ball around, and you know try and finish if we can with three straight wins to finish with. It's been a, it's been a relatively very very good season for us, as I say. You know we had our targets uh, given. You know me and the chairman sat down, me and Chris Brindley and Tony, and we thought a top ten were achievable, and we're going to achieve that hopefully, and and even push up further. You know as I say, I just hope we don't miss out by three points and the Kings Lynn thing takes mm. it away from us because we were only
only one of three teams who lost three points through that. Yeah, that